your screen time, if you stop watching porn, if you do all these things that are actually really good for you, you can basically reach a real life ultra instinct. I've been meditating for roughly 347 days now, a little bit more after this video goes live, but in the beginning, I was very skeptical about meditation because it's one of those habits, especially when you come from like the high speed society where you're used to everything being like boom, 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 instant. Um, but meditation is a lot like working out because there weren't any like instantaneous benefits. You couldn't just, you know, meditate for a week and suddenly your mental health was fixed, especially if you like me have had a lifetime of just bad habits that have gone up and deteriorated my mental health. So in my opinion, meditation together with journaling are two of the most important habits that you're ever going to start doing in your life for the simple reason that it makes you very clear headed in a world that would otherwise have you very disoriented. But rather than explain all the benefits to begin with, I feel like it's easier if I just explain to you what my life used to be like before I started meditating and then after give you a picture of what it's like now and the progress and you know results that I've seen for myself. So before I started meditating, it's safe to say that my life was pretty shit for a plethora of reasons and all of it had to do with my, my mental health, uh, the way that I spoke to myself, it was all like in a very negative tone. I had a hard time believing that I actually deserved a good life. I had a hard time believing that I was worthy of good things and that was reflected in the way that I spoke to myself. It was very destructive, it was very condescending, like, oh, you aren't, you aren't worth anything, like you're worthless, you're, you're not good enough. It's especially manifested when I spoke to humans of the opposite sex, like especially when I interacted with women, because I, I could not look women in the eyes. I could not even look, you know, regular people in the eyes, but it was, it was very hard with women because whenever I looked at them, it was as if I had a voice inside of myself that told me, oh, she would never be interested in you. Like, you're horrible. Like, what do you even have to offer her? You, you're worthless to her. And it would just lead to me not wanting to like be seen as creepy because I had been that guy, especially early on. Like I was extremely blue pilled, extremely beta. And when I would look at women, it would just be like this, you know, whirlwind of thoughts within my head, all telling me that I wasn't good enough or that she wouldn't be interested in me. And that just led to me, <sighs> life was shit. Like my, my life with women was shit because it also led to when I finally made contact with a person of the opposite sex, I felt like I needed to like sacrifice a limb and a leg and whatever to like keep that person interested in me, which led to some very unhealthy patterns in the way that I treated them and the way that I treated myself. I was always willing to put myself second or third just to make sure that the woman who whose interest I'd caught, you know, would keep liking me. And I think a lot of guys can relate to that, especially early on, because you don't have a lot to offer. Like it's not, as a guy, it's very hard, at least for the regular guy, to just say, oh, I want to go out and get laid. Oh, I want to go out on a date and just, you know, snap it with your fingers and make it happen. So when you finally do find someone who is interested in you, you're more like you're living in a within a scarcity mindset because you don't believe that you can replicate this, at least not surely. So you just do a bunch of unhealthy shit like you you put yourself second. You you don't appreciate yourself enough and try to make this other individual happy by by sacrificing your own happiness and i was notorious for doing that i think another big part was also i thought that the world was really out to get me like i thought that the universe was conspiring against me and <laughs> looking in, in retrospect i now realize that the more you actually believe that something is plotting against you the more it's actually gonna be true, the more you're you're gonna try to fabricate a reality that matches that description that you're trying to create. So yeah, you I, at least back then, you know, before I started meditating, I was I thought that everyone had it out for me, that everyone was looking at my most minute mistakes and seeing where they could like reprimand me be like oh you're so shit at this oh you're fucking horrible what 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 do you think that you're able to do this like amazing thing you always think that people are out to get you so all in all as you can possibly have guessed like my life was not very good and my mental health was in, in absolute shambles now it wasn't until last year that i started seriously meditating i had tried it before um, i tried using apps like headspace and calm but when you're so used to seeing instant results and you try these like apps for a month and you can't really feel yourself doing any better. It's hard to be motivated to keep paying for something that 
you have no idea if it's working. And back then I didn't have the growth mindset that I now have. I wasn't like, it's gonna take the time that it's gonna take and I just need to keep you know, sticking to the, I hadn't developed that mindset yet. So for me, meditation was a bunch of time being invested and I didn't really know if it was gonna have any payout whatsoever in the future. But then I, um, I encountered Medito. I started watching Hamsa last year and he very much recommended the app throughout all of his videos, like that it was the best meditation app and I downloaded it. It was completely free to this day, I still use it. And without a doubt, it is the best meditation app on the planet. I wouldn't even be mad if they started marketing it as that on, on the app store because it truly is. There's so many different packs that you can choose from. They have a great 30 day challenge that takes you through a, a bunch of different forms of, of meditation so that you can find the one that you prefer the most and then just stick to that. Uh, currently, I'm actually just doing like the daily meditation. It's, it's a different one every single day, but most of them focus on the breath and I just love it. It's made my, my meditation seamless and it's something that I do every morning to start my day. Now, with the shameless Medito plug out of the way, uh, I kind of want to talk a little bit about what I experienced on my journey towards, you know, the, this almost year of meditation. And I think the primary, because me meditation is one of those habits, it's a lot like building muscle when people haven't seen, like you don't see the progress that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis because you're seeing yourself every day. Uh, but then when you meet someone that you haven't seen in a while, they're like, oh my God, dude, you've gotten so fucking huge, what the hell? And it's kind of the same with meditation because you're noticing your mental health every single day, like from day to day. So it's very hard to like see a very noticeable change when in reality you are taking leaps and bounds every single month. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is because on day 347, something miraculous happened. When I thought about meditation and I thought about the advantages, I always figured it would be something like, you know, an ultra instinct like state, something like the avatar state in, um, like the, the avatar mode in, in The Last Airbender, something like that. I remember seeing Goku the first time he entered Ultra Instinct and just seeing and admiring the calmness that there was to him. It wasn't the usual Goku, it was as if everything was devoid, like he was completely devoid of thought and just completely calm, total confidence. And I just saw that and I was like, fuck dude, I wanna be able to do that. And that was the idea that I had with meditation, the thing that I was going to accomplish. Now, I do actually have some amazing news for you guys because um, the breakthrough that I had was practically what I now refer to as, as ultra instinct. Obviously, I didn't, you know, catch people out of midair and like swing them around and punch them. But I woke up on this, uh, on a day where I was heading to work. I actually didn't manage to meditate because I was a little bit late. I overslept. So I just went to work early. I started, you know, did my journaling at work and... I didn't notice anything weird to begin with. I work in customer service for anyone who doesn't know. Um, I, I work in a, like a sports store and I help people find uh, running shoes and like soccer boots, what, football boots, sorry. A tendency that I'd seen with myself, especially over the last year, was whenever I had an annoying customer, I would always create a narrative in my head that fuck this person, oh, they fucking suck. They don't know what they're talking about. They, they are the villain of this story, but something interesting happened where I had a customer kind of like berating one of my um, one of my coworkers. And I was like sitting there next to, uh, or standing there next to her and, and she was like, can you help me fix this mistake? And the customer was like super, you know, very aggressive towards my coworker. And instead of like conjuring this fake scenario in my head that this customer was a piece of shit, I just remember this serene feeling of, of just realizing of like the second that the thought entered my head an immediate like inner voice told me like, this isn't about us. Like she's not mad at us, she just had a bad day. And I started seeing more remnants of what I've now come to call, like I just call it ultra instinct. That's that's what I'm chasing, that's what I'm trying to replicate. Uh, even when I was like talking to other, like other of my, some other of my colleagues, I was just very able to hold eye contact without it seeming uncomfortable to me. I could look at them in the eyes and I just see them like, you know, going from left to right, like trying to avoid my very intense eye contact. And I hadn't noticed it until they started doing that. Like, holy shit, I'm able to hold eye contact without it being extremely uncomfortable for me. I'm not shy anymore. I'm not like, oh, maybe they, they think this is creepy. I, could, I just remember this like very serene feeling and it honestly felt fucking great. There were a bunch of other cues that I also felt, especially like when helping other customers. Like I just felt this like calmness throughout the entirety of the day. Like I just, 
I had no inner dialogue, or at least very little inner dialogue, very few inner thoughts. And I was just at peace throughout most of the 10 hour shift that I had. It was only towards like the end of the shift that I started like returning back to earth and like started overthinking a little bit again. But this experience was extremely important because it showed me what is possible with enough meditation, with enough journaling, if you actually do the, the mindfulness practices every single day. And I was just overjoyed. I, I was very grateful for having had that experience because it's now made me go back and reevaluate how much um, I can actually improve upon my mindfulness practice. I can meditate more instead of like um, meditating 10 minutes sometimes and 15 minutes other time, making 15 minutes the baseline, starting doing Wim Hof, being able to journal for longer periods of time instead of like settling for two pages. Okay, let's try and journal two, three, four, maybe even five pages every single day, really get my thoughts out. What do I actually think? What do I want? And it's all because that I had this glimpse of, you know, let's just call it all transient omen because I can't, I, I, the next day I had work too. And I, I was kind of like not annoyed, but I really tried to slip back into this state of like complete calm. And it was just very, very difficult. So it isn't something that I can do at will yet. So let's just call it ultra instinct omen for now. And obviously I'll make another video when I, when I reach like, when I'm just, I just feel enlightened. Like, yeah, guys, this is all I'm missing is the white hair. I guess the premise of this video is to show you or rather explain to you the importance of mindfulness, how different your life can actually be. Look at, look at the, the contrast between me not even being able to look people in the eyes and because like I was I was worried about what was what they would think about me I was worried about the thoughts in their heads and now it's just like you can just look people dead in the eye just like and and see how they struggle because they are going through the exact same things that you were going through but now the script has almost been shifted and it's not like you have to go out and make people feel uncomfortable or anything this is this is about you this is about you being comfortable in your own skin about being comfortable living your own life without having to constantly worry about, oh no, am I being perceived as creepy? Just existing, just living your, your own life the way that you want to live it. I, I guess that's the best way to say it. This video is to show you guys what is possible, that you can actually go from super depressed with horrible mental health and after a year be in a completely different place if you just take this shit serious, if you start meditating, if you start journaling, if you start lowering your screen time if you stop watching porn if you do all these things that are actually really good for you you can basically reach a real life ultra instinct obviously you're not gonna be able to fly or like throw out kamehamehas and like take people by the legs and like throw them around or like beat aliens but you you get the point you're gonna get that super calm state of mind which is in the end what i really admired by the form it was the calmness it was the confidence and you you can absolutely replicate that in real life and you don't have to do any hellish training, just with like five, 10, 15 minutes of meditation every single day. And you just do that consistently in one, two, maybe even three years. It might even take you three years to reach this point of like complete and total serene confidence. But imagine if all it takes is three years for you to live life in ultra instinct for the rest of your life, isn't that worth it? I know that I'm really grateful for having had this experience because it's shown me what is possible. That with enough work, I can actually get there. I can actually improve my mental health to a degree where I just feel complete and utter confidence every single waking hour of my day. And I know I'm gonna up all my mindfulness practices after this, meditating more, hopefully be able to do like 20 minute meditations, 25 minute meditations, and you know, a lot more journaling, scribbling down more thoughts. So uh, yeah, safe to say I'm excited and I'll see you guys in the next video.